If you want to enhance your portfolio and bring more value to your clients as a UI designer, today's video, we're gonna dive into a tool called ProtoPie, where you can create high fidelity prototypes to do just that. Using ProtoPie in just a few minutes, you can take a design that looks like this, a nice static screen, to something that looks like this, and beef up your portfolio. But not only that, you're bringing more value to the table as now they have a prototype that they can beta test with, developers know how the interactions are supposed to be built, and your stakeholders can approve on everything before development is even started. So I hope you're ready to dive in. Special thanks to Protopie for sponsoring today's video. If you'd like to check out Protopie at any point, there is a link at the top of the description. So let's get started. So I have this design in Figma and it's super easy to get this into Protopie. You can just use the Protopie plugin, which is available for Figma, Sketch, and Adobe XD. So I'm just going to right click, go to plugins and Protopie. So here I just need to select the layers or frames to export. So I'll just grab all four screens here by clicking and dragging, and then I'll just hit export and it will do its magic. And here in just a matter of seconds, it loads it up in the Protopie app. And I have my untitled document with all four of my screens from Figma imported that easily. Now you might be noticing some of the design is hanging off and that's because all we have to do is just go up here at the top and select the device I designed this for, which was a 14 Pro Max, I believe. Let's see how that looks. And our screens look a lot better. And you can see the preview here on the right of those screens. So before we get started in here, I'm just gonna hit Command S to save this. I'll just give it a name and save that to my personal space there. We didn't dive too much into the design in Figma, so let's take a look at the interactions we need to set up for this high fidelity prototype. So if we have screen one here, which is the let's get started screen. So we'll have to create an interaction for the load of this because we don't want it to be too static. Then when the user hits let's get started, we want to go to the next screen. And this is where the onboarding process of this app is gonna start. We have three different screens for that, as you can see by the paging up top. So when the user hits this arrow, we want to go to the third and then to the fourth. And then on the last one, you see the icon is a check for completion. And that's where it would load the actual app up. But in this case, we're just going to loop it back to the first screen. So let's go ahead and set up those initial interactions. And then we'll get into the details that we want to add for this high fidelity prototype. So when we hit let's get started, so we'll select that. We want to add a trigger and this is going to be a tap trigger. But of course we have a ton of different conditions in here that Figma does not allow us to utilize. So we can get a lot more detailed here in Protopod. But for now, let's just go with a simple tap and then we need to add a response to that trigger. And that's where we'll hit the plus here. What we want to do is jump to the next screen. So we'll select jump and I'll just drag this over so we can see a little bit. And we need to jump to the second screen. So we'll select that. And we want this to be, let's set it to instant for now. And here in our preview, when we hit let's get started, it will immediately jump to our second screen. So now moving to our second screen, I'm gonna select our primary button and repeat that process. We'll add another tap trigger and we're going to jump. And this time we'll jump to the third screen and we'll set it to instant. So I'll just quickly set the rest of these up. And on our final one, we're gonna go back to screen one and set it to a transition of instant. So here on our preview on the right side, we'll hit let's get started and hit our next arrow, our next arrow, and then the check to go back to the start. So now we have a basic navigation through all of the screen setup. We can dive into more detailed interactions. The next interaction I wanna set up is actually on screen two. We have this progress bar in blue that needs to fill up this gray bar. And then when that happens, we want to jump to the next screen. So if the user wants to skip ahead, they can use the primary button here, which we've already set up. But if they don't, after a short time, it will immediately take them to the next screen. So to set that up, I have the group here that's got all three of the gray bars. And then we have this one called progress bar, which is the blue one here. So we're gonna adjust the width value of this. But since this was made in Figma, you can see it kind of distorts there a little bit. And that's because we need to go over here and make this editable so we can adjust all of the values. I'm also going to unlock the size here. So the aspect ratio is adjustable. So when I adjust the width value of this, it does not affect the height value. So let's set this to full width of this bar. 
which is 117 pixels. So we need to copy that value. And when this screen loads up, we need to add that trigger, which is called start. And so on start, we want our progress bar. So I'll select that to scale. So we'll add a scale response and we want it to scale to the full width, which is 117 pixels. And you'll see here we have this timeline over here. And if I move this around, that sets the delay. And we can also drag this out, which sets the duration, which is kind of a visual way to represent these two values. So for duration, in this case, how long do we want this screen to be viewable? And for this, I'm going to say three seconds. So it's going to take three seconds for this blue bar to fill the screen and then move to the next one. And we also want no delay since we want it to happen immediately. So now we have the scale to set. We need to adjust our progress bar and actually set its width to zero, which is going to be the start state. So when the screen loads, it's gonna start there and it's gonna to go to the full width. And if I go over here and I hit run, you can see in the preview that it's going to scale all the way up. But you'll notice it's not exactly scaling in time it's because we have an easing. So what we need to do is actually change this to linear. And now you'll see that over time it fills up nice and even. Next up, we can add a second response. We want to jump. And this is going to be to screen three. We're going to set that to instant. And for the delay, we'll set that to three seconds. So when that bar completely fills, it will instantly swap, as you can see here in the preview. After quickly setting that up for screen three and four, we can take a look at the interaction so far. And when I hit let's get started, you'll see it starts to scale all the way, then it automatically jumps, and it's going to do that for each of the screens. But we're going to have one problem here that you'll notice when I hit let's get started, it's automatically filled up again. And this is a super easy fix. Every time we use the jump response, we just need to tick this box for resetting the selected scene. So when it moves to the next scene, it's reset to its start state. And when we use the jumps here, we need to make sure both of the jumps are set to reset. And we need to do that for every single jump in the interaction. And now our high fidelity prototype is starting to come along. You see when it fills up here, it's gonna to move to the next screen. We can skip ahead and we have an infinite loop. The next thing I wanna do is go through each of the screens and add just a little bit of motion, nothing too crazy to ruin the UX, but just to add a little bit more to the interaction. So I definitely don't want my buttons to be moving or I want them to be accessible from the start for a good user experience. So let's start with the typography here. So each of these, I just want them to fade in. So what we need to do is add a start trigger to screen one here, and then I'll select the heading and grab the opacity. And we'll set this to 100% because that's what we want it to change to. And I'm gonna adjust the easing for pretty much most of the stuff in this video to ease out cubic. And let's set a duration of one second. So it's a nice long fade transition there and I don't want any delay here. So now we need to set the starting state. So I'll just grab this heading by default and set it to 0% opacity. And I'll do the exact same thing to the body paragraph, making sure to set it to 0% opacity at the start, and then adding a slight delay this time just so it follows the heading a little bit. You can kind of think of this as the start state and then we're adjusting it to its final state here using the trigger and response system. Next, what I want to do is have each of these blocks kind of move in. So we'll start with this top one here, and I need to pay attention to the X and Y values. So I'm going to be adjusting the Y value when I move these. So I'm going to copy this because this is where I want it to end at, and I'll just move it off of the screen. So now with that selected, I'm going to grab a move response, and then I'll set the Y value. So what we copied, I'll set the easing. And for the duration on these, let's set it to 0.6. And for the first one, we'll set the delay to 0.2. And then I'll just repeat that. For this one, I'm going to grab the X value since I'm gonna slide it off to the left. Then I'm gonna add a move response and paste that in and update the rest of these settings. So I'm gonna do that for all four of these until I have a good looking interaction. Just repeated that process for the remaining blocks and have them all slide in and a few tweaks to the delays just to clean it up a bit. And here's what we have. To give us more time, I'm gonna adjust the jump to five seconds instead of three. So the user has a little bit more time to digest everything on the screen before it automatically jumps to the next one. And with that, let's start on screen two. 
I'm going to grab the heading and set it to 0% opacity, and we'll add that response to set it back to 100%. And for the duration, we'll set it to 0.6, and we'll put a 0.1 delay. Then we're going to have both of these kind of move in from the side. So I'm going to grab the X value of this grouping and then slide it over. And then we'll add that move response, paste in that value, and then adjust the rest of the settings. At this point, it's just rinse and repeat for the remaining screens, just adding the different move responses and having the opacity change on those H1s on each of the different screens and just playing around with different timings and delays to make sure everything is nice and consistent. One thing I paid attention to was how long it took each screen to get to its end state. And I tried to have that consistent between all three of the onboarding screens just to make sure it felt right. Another thing to pay attention to is the user experience. You'll notice none of my primary buttons really fade in or move around. That way the user can use them. And I also have my text coming in very quickly just to try to get the best user experience, but still have a little bit of motion in there. One of the things I really like about Protopie is they visually have this timeline. This comes in clutch when trying to get the perfect interaction. Instead of just typing in this text area over and over, I can easily just drag multiple things around and change the duration right from here. And it makes creating high fidelity prototypes super quick and easy. And I get a visual representation of how long something's gonna take compared to something else. It's kind of one final detail here on screen two. We're talking about live streams here in the heading. So it'd be cool if this was a video playing. So I'm actually going to zoom in here and I have a video rectangle. This is my placeholder stock image and I'm gonna replace that. So I'm gonna go up to media, video, and then I'll grab the video I'm gonna import here. And just open that up. And then I'll just kind of position this how I want it. Looks pretty good. And then on the stream, which is the parent here, I'm gonna make sure that clip sub layers is ticked on. You'll see that it clips that around there. And then I'll just add a corner radius to that. And to take a final look at what we've created, I'm gonna open this up in cloud. So I'm just gonna click cloud here. And from here, I can take a look at our final interaction. You can see we have our first onboarding screen. I'll skip through it pretty quick here, but it looks really nice and it loops back to the beginning. And from here, I can hand this off to developers with the new handoff feature you'll see here at the top. You can also open that up here in the Protopie app with this new handoff button. And if I select the handoff option, it prompts me to create a recording of my interaction. So I'll just do that now. And I'll go through each one of my screens real quick, just capturing this entire interaction from start to finish. Once I'm done, I'll hit stop recording at the top. And so from here, I can send this to a developer and they have everything they need to start developing the exact interaction I'm looking for. You can see the breakdown as I scrub through the timeline of every single interaction, how long it lasts, Every element is selectable, so you can see a little bit more attributes about it, like the width, the height, opacity, et cetera. Protopie here just making the developer handoff so much smoother. So not only am I making my portfolio look nicer, but I'm also bringing more value to the table as a UI UX designer by finalizing and creating these detailed interactions and high fidelity prototypes with Protopie. Of course, we're just scratching the surface with Protopie in this video. If you're interested in more advanced tutorials and more Protopie content, let me know down in the comments below. Thanks to Protopie for sponsoring today's video. If you'd like to check it out, there is a link at the top of the description. Here's some more videos I think you'll like. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.